I decided to do a video. It's um let's see now. I've just been going over some of my old research videos, my live streams I did. Now um I didn't realise this but um because I've been sick for two couple of years like um I was looking on uh, my YouTube channel and it, it kind of just hit me a bit that it's um, three years ago. It's um, three years ago since I actually worked on my Meg. I was thinking, oh my God, all that time. And I also realised something else. When I recorded this, when I did these videos, um... The quality, the video quality, I was using that horrible um, dash cam camera and um, obviously the resolution, the maximum resolution was 480p. Um, so it was very poor quality. So I thought, well, let's do an update on here. Just pause a sec. The reason I want to do an update, well, the reason I've just shortened the legs on the tripod because they were too long. <laughs> um, the reason I want to do an update is because um, I've been reevaluating some things about it, and um, I figured it might be worthwhile giving you a high definition view of my Meg, which I built. Obviously, it comes into two parts. Now, if you remember, it's obviously not connected up right now, obviously. Um, I just wanted to sh explain, just go over it again and show you how it was, you know, the assembly, what I did. So, I used nanocrystalline cores um, to make my corners. So, the actual corner sections which go between these ferrite rings and the actual uh, secondaries, which go up to the other secondaries... There's nanocrystalline cores in there, which I took from a, a transformer, a nanocrystalline transformer, a friend of mine sent me, which has spent a lot of work cutting, actually. And the secondary coils, uh, cores are actually using ferrite, ferrite slugs, which I had to cut to, um, if it comes off. So this is one of my secondaries, and I've got a secondary on the other side. So this is the ferrite material you look if you look closely you'll see that the core material in the middle is nanocrystalline so this material that sticks out of the ends here is nanocrystalline material and these are ferrite cores just to improve the coupling between the nanocrystalline material and the actual coils so my coil goes on here like this and I arranged it so that these would intersect or there's a slight raised plastic piece in the middle there and that would enable that to hook into um, the recessed one on, on the top which is um, uh, also nanocrystalline in there so if I, if I move that you see that's the male these are the male and these are the female so if I take this bobbin off, like this, you will see the nanocrystalline core material basically goes all the way through over to meet up with the others on the other side. But there's a slight gap, right, because of the plastic bit in the middle. And what completes the gap is the ferrite material. There's only a couple of millimetres if you look. Um, there's only a couple of millimeters, so the losses are minimal. Minimal. Uh, I've actually got some rust in there. <laughs> I just noticed that there's a bit of rust. So, um, so I wanted to do this video because I can actually move that to the outside. I think, yeah. I wanted to show something because i've been doing some more research on free energy and uh, about my designs and that and i came to some conclusions actually that one wants to be i really should move these around because i couldn't really do it easily when it was all wired up this coil wants to be moved <laughs> i was laughing at myself actually watching my old videos and my old live streams how i was struggling so much and 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, I was laughing a bit at how things went wrong, but you know, you get so absorbed in something. I don't know why this what come up. Oh, it's stuck. You know what? I was watching myself freeing up these things with alcohol, and that's probably what I'm going to have to do as well. Because the alcohol, I probably glued that on or some that. Just need to loosen it. I'm sorry to show you. If I can get this off without breaking my bobbin. All my hard work. Because look how, how neatly wound that is. I mean, I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, a lot of work winding these coils. And obviously, it's got Captain Tape. Now, if you're interested in what Captain Tape is, it's spelled K A P T O N. It's not captain as in the boat a ship and you know it's a, it's a different type of captain anyway this is captain tape you can actually find it on ebay and it's high temperature um high voltage insulation it's what you use in transformers uh, see if i can get this off now because come on you should have freed up by now um uh, why would it come off ah there we go got it so that was stuck on with somewhat Anyway, I wanted to turn it around so I put these wires on the outside. It's easy to get to them. Don't make any difference rotating. It just makes it a lot easier to get to the wires. I don't know why I put it on that other way around. But you see, that's the same. It's got the nanocrystalline core material, ferrite cores to fill the gap to, so I could get a bigger bobbin on. That's the main reason for that. Um, let's see if I can get this back on. Let's see if it'll go on this way. Round, yeah. There we go, got it. Right, so these are my um, these are my uh, concentrics. Uh, basically, an array of uh, I think these were six magnets. No, these were eight magnets. The way the way they work is, if I pull that apart, it's a lot easier when you do it in half. Is this one? I made some changes to it because the way this works um, is that the coil, the actuator coils are actually inside the coil, inside the actual magnet array, the rings. So you've got um, <clears throat> the polarity of the um, the rings is alternate. So you've got it pulling there, pushing, um, pulling, pushing. And the way that works is like a pump, basically. When the coils, uh, which are actually recessed inside the the core right in the middle on these now i have to tell you it's less effective it's not efficient not as efficient when they're in the middle it was something of that it was the last thing i tried before i kind of gave up on it um i need to undo all that and go back to the original coils which were on the outside and these are spaces these parts with the ferrite rings and i'm using toroidal tr transformer rings so I could pull all this apart, but I think it's glued in. I think I glued it to keep the noise down. So I'm going to have to soak that with alcohol. Another thing that he's changing is I've got too many magnets in here. So instead of having two magnets in each slot, I really just want to stick with the one magnet in each slot. Because the more magnets you have, the harder it is to actually create your um, field lines, the actual magnetic field lines that you want to create. And um, obviously, I was working at such a high frequency, I wasn't able to move them field, field lines very effectively. So this is why it was less efficient at high frequency um, with the coil on the right in the middle, basically of these. Um, I don't know if this will come apart. No, I don't want to break it because um, I'm going to have to. Um, what I'm going to have to do with these actually is. Um, um there is some actually cut there's actually some steel core material below these ferrite rings i don't know if you can see that but if i shine my other torch down there you can see there's some steel laminations in there to couple this the rings to the coil in the middle of the the transformer well this is basically my actuator my prime mover transformer uh, I thought I needed to really show you in more detail in high definition. So when I was talking previously on my uh, live stream about when I had these coils the wrong way around, um, 
what I was talking about was the fact that there was two coils. On, in this situation, there's only one coil in the middle. But previously, I had one coil wired so it was pushing this way. And the other coil on the other side was pulling. Well, what I meant was they were wired in series, you see. And one coil was flipped around so that they were both pushing against each other, which was cancelling its, itself out, which is why it wasn't working very well. So in my... In my um, in my playlist of the magnet motor, um, the video called Streaming Something Plus, stream, Streaming Something Dash Plus, um, I was talking about my cars being reversed, and that's what I was talking about. But in this situation, there's only one coil in the middle, and I was trying to make it easier and less power input. But I was going down the wrong rabbit hole, basically. Um, it was working better previously. So... Ah, I got hooked up on my wire there. Right, so... These are on little runners, so I can adjust the distance for different coil sizes, obviously, which is what I was explaining in my live stream. So, the coupling, right, in here, down there, there's a ferrite ring, and that's pressing up directly against the nanocrystalline core material which forms the corner which travels all the way up through these coils so there's actually very little loss because the, the nanocrystalline material form the corners which is normally where you get the most loss and the actual ferrite rings were transmit were stacked against each other to form the tubular core material that travels through these rings and all the way out the other side and through there so i wanted to just give you some um, a little bit more information on how I built this thing and there's something else I want to talk about because I have to reevaluate in my designs and after looking at other people other people's work I realized something very important and that is that um, to make this more efficient uh, what you need to do is your output coils you need to make each you need to have them in pairs. So this coil here will be paired with that coil. And you, they need to be matched. So this coil is identical to that coil. Now I think 1.5 ohm DC, 1.6 ohm DC. No, these weren't matched. This is why I was having a problem. So that was 101 grams, this one, this coil. This was 93.2 grams. So... I actually didn't get these matched. These coils need to be a pair. They need to be in perfect to balance. So that they actually, um, the resonance or the lens effect or the equal opposite reaction, if you like. Basically, when these two coils are loaded down, they're supposed to um, cancel the uh, drag on the prime mover now when I was under load my input my, my output current was dropping right down I think I'm trying to think what it was now um, I think it was around uh, 21 or was it 30 milliamps or something but when it was under load it dropped down to 5 milliamps now I could have got it down even lower if I'd had these coils properly matched now these other coils on this side that was 1.5 ohm this side DC resistance and that was 93 grams so I should have paired this coil on this side with that coil and I, sh I might have should have paired this coil with that coil maybe I don't know let me just see if I can get that off did I just have this one off uh, I'm not sure let's have a look um, this is 76.2 grams, um, no, this is not matched, um, I obviously use different wire for this, so this was obviously, I can't even read it now, it's been so long since I made these things, let's just see if I can read that, um, oh god, it's faded, um, I can't remember what gauge wire I use on it either. <sighs> can't read that. Real, real red light. No, 
Hang on, turn a shine on the red light built behind it. Uh, am I using my laser? <laughs> no, I can't read that. Hang on. 44. Can't even read my own writing. Um, I'd have to remeasure it. I think I'll put the DC ohms or something on it. But yeah, this coil is... That coil probably would have been a good match with that one. So that one should have been on this side, really. So if I... Um, if I was to rebuild this again, if I was to reassemble this, um, I, I think I'd go down a slightly different route. Instead of having two actuator coils, I think I'd have one actuator coil. Um, um, I would, uh, yeah, I would, I would have one actuator coil actuating vertically instead of horizontally. Maybe I've seen some other people doing some similar, similar designs. It might more, be more effective. Anyway, I don't want this video to get too long because it's it's going to be high definition. And the problem with that is it takes me forever to upload it. And uh, you're talking about two gigabytes of data and that's too much for me to upload. So I just wanted to show you um, um, a high definition video of my previous build. So you could see it better. Um, obviously, the people out there would be curious. I'll stick this in the playlist anyway. Um, so basically that's it really I just need to take a few steps back with the on the drawing board as you say um, I bet I can't get this back on here now oh yeah there we go <clears throat> oh, right so I'll put this back in here for now so it doesn't get lost And it just clicks together like Lego. Uh, yeah. Um, turn this over. I think I wrote it the right way around, don't I? Hang on. Should be. I have a feeling I've got this back to front. I think it goes that way around. Yeah, it feels better this way. It feels like it goes better that way around. If you get them wrong way around and want they're working against each other instead of in, in, in synchronicity, if you know what I mean. <coughs> so, yeah, that was it um, that I was working on. And um, I want to get back to it very soon. I'm just working out the best way of doing this because, as I say, what I want to do is I want to do away with the, the two um concentrics i want to just have one between them um linking um i want to have the concentric magnet and the coil two coils on each side of the concentric um up and down to link the um two sections and i would I, I think that would work much more effectively um the reason I'm thinking that is because the coils on each side, get these wires out of the way, are supposed to be in pairs. So you've got two coils working in unison. And the other two coils on the other side working in unison with each other. And when you're actually pulling through in series, um, the problem with that is you're taking you're you're throwing the system out of balance, and the only way could, the only way I could get this to work was to run it at a high frequency. Whereas if I wanted to run it at a lower frequency, I'd really need to have the actual coil coming down through here um, instead of across because um, there's a it's all to do with timing. You know, it's to do with milliseconds, microseconds and everything else. And I was running this thing, pulsing it to like one mic milliseconds or something. And then it was like 500 microseconds. And that was the only way I could get it to work. And I think it would work more effectively at a lower frequency if I had this thing. So it 
so that this half was working um, together and the other half was working together instead of um, trying to work it all in series which is what it is right now because basically this whole thing is like a big the flux is going around in circles like this you see um, <coughs> but by having it <coughs> pulsing up and down we create another two separate void two separate channels if you like so the channel coming around this way and then there's a channel coming around this way if you get what i'm saying so anyway that's what i'm theorizing at the moment i haven't obviously designed anything modeled anything in sketchup yet oh, no, this is still fit this still doesn't fit right what the hell it's not fitting together right i've got this female and male right i don't know i think my bobbin's not on properly that's what it is hang on this bobbin doesn't feel like it's on right ah that was it yeah it wasn't on right uh, i don't think i've got this one on right either that's better right will it fit together now Oh, you know why I staggered them? Because the connections on this end are touching the, the other connections. That's why it won't go together now. Now, now that's why I, that's why I had these turned around because the connections are actually touching them connections. Yeah, there's a reason for everything, and I forgot about that. So, yeah, <laughs> I've got to take these off again. Damn it! All right. I'll just rotate that around again. So, couldn't remember why I did it that way. Now, now I remember. Remember. Oh God, these are so tight. Hang on. Oh, chopped my finger then. Right. Yeah. So I dug this. I took this back off the windowsill because it's been collecting dust for three years. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> trying to get this one off again. You know the plastic shrink. The plastic has shrunk, and um, because of that, it's got really tight. And. So yeah, if it helps somebody anyway, just share my theories with them, with you. Um, maybe it will um, save me having to rebuild it. But yeah, I just wanted to help really. And um, I'll try and get back to it. Yeah, that fits right now. <laughs> it fits together right now. That's why I wouldn't sit properly because I had them wires touching. Yeah. So that's the high definition video version. Okay, I have to, as I say, there's no point in rewiring this up right now because, um, as I said, the, these actuator coils that are in there, they're just, yeah, useless at the moment. It wants re, re um, doing. I found my original coils, by the way. Let me just pause a sec. These are my original actuator coils. That's two. And there was one on each side of the um, concentric magnet array. Those two, and there's the other two. You can see they're all perfectly balanced. The captain tape starting to peel off a bit though, because they've been sat on the shelf for about three years, <laughs> and my wires are. Still, some of the wires are still attached. The reason I cut the wires off is because I don't want to melt the bobbins because it's so easy to mess up the connections to the coils. I actually wound these on my coil winder, so they're actually precisely wound. I never marked them, well, them though, but they're of extremely low impedance. And I think it's, I'm not sure, I think it's 18 SWG wire maybe. Can't remember, but uh, it was a high frequency. But to run this thing at a lower frequency, we're talking um, 100 hertz or low, somewhere around there. These coils would be, not be suitable for that. They would these 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 are designed to run at high frequencies. 
so yeah anyway that's it i hope you enjoyed watching a high definition video of my meg which has been sat on the shelf now for three years <laughs> bye for now